Welcome back to my booth and welcome to my biggest unboxing video yet. In fact, the package is so big that I had to ditch my usual desk, ask for a friend's help to carry it in his car all the way to the middle of the desert so I can test it out peacefully. This is the Afreda S6 reverse three wheel bike or as I like to call it, the Tesla of e-bikes. Now, why would I make such a claim? You will find out through the course of this video. Its unique design enables a very different riding experience as well as it turns heads wherever you go. In this video, I'll be focusing on testing the bike for the most crucial aspects of being a bike. Acceleration, speed, braking, battery mileage, uh, maneuvering, build quality, and of course, off-road riding. Without any further delay, let's jump right in. All right, once the unloading session is over, we are finally ready to unveil the star of this video. Here it is in its folded position. Now it is quite heavy, uh, over 20 kilos or 44 pounds for my imperial folks. Uh, we had to lift it by two people. Probably someone with better upper body strength can do it alone. I found something very interesting as I tried to erect the bike. Uh, there is a small luggage bag kind of wheel at the bottom, uh, which uh, helps the complete thing stand upright even in the folded position, which is quite thoughtful actually, you can even move it around like a suitcase. Before I move any further, there was also a small carton which came inside the package and let me have a look at what's inside. First off, we have a charger in a box, it's a 54.6 volts, 1.5 amp charger. I actually forgot the charger at home but had to show something in the video so this is just the box. Next uh, is a ziplock bag full of extra accessories, a couple of zip ties, some nuts and bolts, a bunch of Allen keys and uh, a vial of mineral oil. There is an additional seat for kids which goes between the handle and the rider seat so it can seat a total of uh, three people at a time. And finally a fanny pack for the bike to carry your essentials. Now let's go ahead and unfold the bike. Before you do that it's best to secure the brakes and the display in place by simply tightening the screws below them. Uh, now it's just a matter of simply lifting the small lever to disengage the lock and the bike unfolds just like that and it is ready to ride. And just as simple as it is to unfold the bike, it is to fold it back as well. You simply grab the lever which is now behind the seat and uh, with one swift motion you pull it up and forward until the lock falls back into place. Now you can give it a helping nudge if required. Uh, it's really quick and efficient. Uh, I'm glad to see that their one second fold slash unfold claim was spot on. Now that the bike is unfolded, I see it in a completely different light. Remember when I referenced Tesla earlier? This is one of the two reasons. This design looks very similar to something Tesla would come up with if they ever decided to make an e-bike. The frame is made of aerospace grade aluminum and it shows. It really screams outstanding craftsmanship. The frame looks elegant, strong with the matte finish, uh, it looks sturdy, there's absolutely no shaky or fidgety parts or bolts. Achieving this design and being able to integrate it into a foldable system with two or three seats really says something about the effort that went into the designing stage. Alright, I'm gonna skim through the remaining design specs quickly so we can get to the good part. So you've got two 14-inch uh, aluminum alloy front tires with mud guards. Above that, we have this gorgeous looking suspension and steering mechanism and the handlebars above them, which are pretty standard. The rear wheel is also 14 inches, which hosts the motor. And all the three wheels have hydraulic disc brakes, which I'll be testing soon. It has a ventilated seat, which also comes with built-in shock absorbing springs for a smoother ride. Uh, it is a universal seat holder, so you can, of course, switch it for another seat. You've also got the footrests for the rider here and uh, since this is a two to three seater bike, there is also uh, foldable footrests for the rear passenger. Not to forget that you can remove the rear seat completely if you want to ride it solo and look cooler. Resting below the seat and on the sides of the back wheel are two batteries. These long cuboids with Afreda written on them, these are both batteries, like all of them in their entirety of length. And then they end in this weatherproof plastic chip compartment. On the bottom side of this compartment are the charging ports, which I think should have been covered just in case any water splashes up into them, but they're exposed for now. I might just put some tape on it. And then the power switch. So it is a three-way switch and it turns off when it is in the center and you can turn it to either side and it will start using uh, the battery from that side. 
So when you run out of one battery, you can switch it to the other. This way you can still use the bike while the drained battery can be charged in small installments. You never have to abandon the bike completely for three to four hours at a time. That's how long it needs to charge completely from zero to 100. Once you switch on the battery, simply press and hold the power button on the display on the handlebar and uh, it comes to life. The display shows the speed, status of the battery currently in use and the odometer. You can press the power button to toggle through the odometer, individual trip distance and some more options which I haven't figured out yet. Now I'll come to the battery life later. For now the other button you see is for switching gears. Not sure if gear is the right word, more like riding modes. One is for beginners and as you get the hang of it you can progress to 2 and 3. The main difference is that in 1 it only goes up to 15 km per hour, in 2 it goes up to around 35 km per hour and in 3 it goes to the max. Now I did a makeshift dynamo test with a rear tire in the air and it went up to 52 km, the top speed. Now that would however drop a little when an actual person is riding it. Finally on the other handle you have the horn which is surprisingly sharp and loud the headlight switch and you also have rear lights uh, as well along with the battery indicator LEDs. Now I decided to kick it off in 3 mode and let me tell you it leaps forward like there's no tomorrow. Apparently the modes also change the rate of acceleration. Check out the side by side between 1, 2 and 3. When it comes to the ride it moves very smooth, very quiet. You might hear the suspension in action uh, when the bike goes over pebbles and rough terrain. You might hear it but you don't feel it that much. The ride is super smooth. It accelerates quickly and then holds at the speed comfortably unless of course you start going uphill or there's a change in terrain. Now in mode 3 it reached a top speed of 52 km an hour when I did that makeshift dynamo test. But let's give it a try with 80 kilos of me on it. All right, so it peaked at 46.8 kilometers per hour, which is 29 miles per hour. And I have to confess that is very impressive. That is quite fast for an e-bike. You can actually switch the riding modes between one, two and three while it is moving. You don't have to like stop to change the modes. Uh, and by the way, this bike comes in two different motor versions, a 500 watts and a lower one. I think it's around 250 or 350 watts. Now I have the 500 watts version, which can go up to this speed. The other version goes uh, up to around 30 km per hour as far as I know. I'm curious to know as to how long it will take to accelerate from zero to its max speed. So I asked my friend Fizzer to give the bike a run and as soon as he presses the throttle, he'll give me a signal and I'll start the stopwatch and he'll signal me once again when it reaches top speed and I'll stop the watch. And there he goes. He's off. Alright, not really a Bugatti but it took 12.71 seconds to reach its maximum speed. Now when I was riding it myself I noticed that it went very quickly uh, into the mid 30s in like from 0 to mid 30s in like 5 seconds but then it takes a while from there to go on to the mid 40s. Nevertheless it's pretty impressive. Next I'm gonna test the brakes. Once again I asked my friend Fizzer to take the bike to max speed and then slam the brakes when he reaches the line. Alright, so I'm short of a chalk or anything that I can mark a line with. So I'm just gonna go with some water. Hopefully it stays there. He's at maximum speed. Okay, now we're gonna count roughly how many feet that would be. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it slides for about seven feet before coming to a complete stop. Now these are some rock solid okay. brakes. Now you might tell me, well, seven feet is not really that impressive, but keep in mind, this was just the rear brakes. Uh, if you apply the front brakes, you can come to an abrupt stop and even topple over. Don't take my word for it, watch this. <laughs> Now I don't know whether you noticed or not but the bike does not need a kickstand. 
due to its uh, three wheel design it stays completely balanced so you can get off and on and be on your way without having to kick a stand out of your way this brings us to another feature of the bike which is the turning mechanism now since it has two front wheels when turning around a sharp corner at speed uh, the bike naturally leans to one side uh, and when it does that it will lift one tire in the air however if you unlock the mechanism from this lever just pulling it up the tires now lean simultaneously to the sides allowing for the bike to lean and turn around corners at speed at the same time providing double the grip of two tires so the bike never loses traction uh, the bike can lean a total of 50 degrees from the standing position a genius design it was actually inspired by the mp3 bike by piaggio from italy now uh, once you bring the bike to a stop you can of course engage the lock again so the bike remains standing let's move to the suspension now now see these springs they can absorb a displacement of up to 11 inches this makes it great for conquering speed bumps or any rocks or stones on the path you can actually ride it down a flight of stairs with these shocks now when you see this you naturally have a question what about off-road can it handle that or how good can it handle that well here is your short answer yes i tried it on a sandy path a rocky road and a whole bunch of gravel and it rode very smoothly the shocks are very capable of cancelling out any bumps that come your way. Of course, it's not going to be the same as riding on smooth asphalt, but you get my point. However, if I have a choice of a rough and a smooth road, I'll take the smooth road even if it is a little longer. And the reason for that is that I don't want any sand, mud or potentially tiny pebbles flying and getting stuck in any of the hydraulic brake systems and causing unnecessary abrasion or any other potential issues. Let's talk about battery mileage. Now this is the second reason I compared it with the Tesla. Now I charged both the batteries to full and even though I couldn't drain both the batteries until the day I made this video, I did manage to drain one completely and it happened at pretty much exactly uh, around 30 kilometers, uh, a little over 30 kilometers actually. So I can confidently say it can give uh, at least 60 kilometers. Now, of course, the weight of the rider and the path inclination also matters, but in general, 60 kilometers or 37 miles. To give you some perspective, if you're living in Dubai, that means going from Dubai Mall to Sahara Center in Sharjah and coming back to Dubai Mall and you will still be left with 20 kilometers. That is saying something. Now, of course, you can't ride it on highways, but just to give you an idea. The only test I couldn't perform was uphill and that's because I live in Dubai. It's very flat. I did see someone in another country try it on a very steep and long road and the bike didn't come to a complete stop. It kept pushing even at speeds of as low as two or three kilometers per hour to make it over that hill. All right guys, that is pretty much it. Time for the final verdict now. Now the only issue I had with the bike was no place for a water bottle. Just kidding, I had the Finey pack, I just didn't want to install it yet. But for the charging ports I showed earlier, I'll still suggest adding some sort of protection. Other than that, uh, I know I say this a lot, but I love it. This trike hasn't uh, stopped impressing from start to finish. It's not your average e-bike. The unique design, excellent build quality uh, paired with foldability and portability is enough for anyone to consider it when looking for a bike. Did I mention it can fit in the trunk of any small sedan car? Uh, of course, without the box. On top of that, great speed, user-friendly riding modes, great shock absorption, uh, solid brakes, uh, can carry three persons uh, at a time, and a truly impressive battery mileage, or battery life, whatever you want to call it. Afreda will be selling these bikes in two different versions on their uh, crowdfunding page at indiegogo.com, uh, starting from an early bird price of $19.99 US dollars. And I'll leave a link for it in the description box below so you can go and check it out. That's it for now guys. If you enjoyed watching this video, hit the like button below and share the video with your friends and family. While you're at it, don't forget to subscribe to my booth for more gadget reviews, DIYs and life hacks. You can also follow me on Instagram and other social media. All the links are in the description box below. Click on the thumbnails to watch my other videos or check out my YouTube channel for more. And as always, thanks for watching.